Odd were destroyed by a savage howling wind. God subjected them to it for seven whole nights and eight whole days without a break. You could see the people flattened in their homes, just like the hollow stumps of uprooted palms. Do you see any remnant of them left? The history of the Arabian Peninsula goes back a very long way. Countless legends of the desert-dwelling Bedouins have come down from the past to the present day. One of these legends speaks of a city built among the empty dunes of the desert. Despite the lethal land around it, the city was rich and fertile. The people of the city enjoy great well-being. However, according to the story, the people of the city committed a great sin and suffered a great punishment for it. A horrible sandstorm annihilated them as if they had never existed. Archaeological research in Oman in the south of the Arabian Peninsula has revealed that this tale is true, not a myth at all and that the people mentioned in the early sources are the people of Ad mentioned in the Quran. It was the amateur archaeologist Nicholas Clapp who discovered this lost city. An Arabophile and a winning documentary filmmaker, Clapp had encountered a very interesting book during his studies into Arab history. This book was called Arabia Felix, written by the British researcher Bertram Thomas in 1932. Arabia Felix was the name given by the Romans to the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula and meant fortunate Arabia. The reason for this was that the inhabitants of that region in ancient times used to be known as the most fortunate people of the age. But why was that? The people of the region produced and sold frankincense, an aromatic resin from rare trees. Frankincense was of great value in ancient societies and was used as a fumigant in various religious ceremonies. That aromatic resin was as valuable as gold at that time. In his book, the British researcher Thomas claimed that he had discovered the traces of one of the fortunate peoples in question. This was the city known to the Bedouins as Ubar. On one of his trips to the region, the Bedouins had shown him an ancient track, saying that it led to a very ancient city known as Ubar. Thomas was greatly interested in this matter, but died before he could complete his research. 
Nicholas Clapp studied Thomas's writings and came to believe in the existence of the lost city mentioned in the book. Wasting no time, he embarked on his own research. Clapp asked NASA to scan the region by satellite. In the pictures taken from space appeared the traces of a number of tracks, invisible to the naked eye from the ground. Clapp then compared these pictures to old maps and came up with the result he had been expecting. The tracks in the old maps were the same as those in the pictures taken from space. Where these tracks joined was a wide area that was realized to have been an ancient settlement. The time had come for Nicholas Clapp to set off on his travels. It was a long journey, and one full of adventure. As it made its way through the endless dunes, the research team from time to time made use of the latest technology. Yet there were also times in that wild place where technology was of no use. Eventually, Clapp and his team arrived at the historic remains they hoped would be those of the city of Ubar. From the moment the ruins were discovered, it was realized that they belonged to the people of Ad mentioned in the Quran and the city of Iram that they had built. Klopp also made use of the Quran during his investigations. In the Quran, the city of Iram was described as possessing tall pillars. Yet the Arabic word used for pillar also means tower. In other words, the feature of the city described in the Quran was that it possessed tall towers. The traces of these tall towers duly emerged during the excavations. Thanks to the use of three-dimensional graphic technology, scientists were able to reconstruct them. Dr. Zarins, a member of the research team that carried out the excavations, stated that it was these towers that distinguished this city from other archaeological discoveries and confirmed that the site was the city of Iram, which had belonged to the people of Ad mentioned in the Quran. Do you not see what your Lord did with Ad of the city of Iram with lofty pillars, whose like was not created in any land? Ad denied the truth. How terrible were my punishments and warnings. We unleashed a howling wind against them on a day of unremitting horror. It plucked up men like uprooted stumps. The people of Ad, whose traces the archaeologists discovered in the city of Ubar, had denied the prophet Hud, who had been sent to them, at which they were destroyed by God. When they saw it as a storm cloud advancing on their valleys, they said, This is a storm cloud which will give us rain. No, rather it is what you desired to hasten, a wind containing painful punishment. It is revealed in the verse how the people saw a cloud that would bring them great suffering, yet that they failed to understand its significance believing it to be a rain cloud. 
This is an important indication of the nature of the suffering that was about to be unleashed on them. Desert storms. The whirlwinds that proceed along by raising up the desert sands resemble a rain cloud from a distance. It is possible that the people of Odd were deceived by this and failed to realize the danger. In fact, Ubar, the Atlantis of the sands, was unearthed from beneath a layer of sand several meters thick. As revealed in the Quran, the storm lasted seven days and eight nights, depositing tons of sand on the city and burying its population alive. The most important evidence that the people of Ad had been buried in a desert storm is the word Akaf, used in the Quran to define the place of the people of Ad. Remember the brother of Ad when he warned his people by the sand dunes and warners passed away before and after him. Worship no one but God. I fear for you the punishment of a terrible day. Akaf in Arabic means sand dunes. This shows that the people of Ad lived in a region full of sand dunes, so it is quite natural that the city should have been buried in a sandstorm. The disaster that struck the people of Ad in the form of a storm that flattened people just like the hollow stumps of uprooted palms must have destroyed the whole population within a very short time. The whole city and everything in it was buried alive under the sand. The desert slowly spread after the destruction of the people of Ad, leaving no trace of them behind as it settled over them. In brief, historical and archaeological discoveries prove the existence of the people of Ad and of the city of Iram with lofty pillars as mentioned in the Quran, and that they were destroyed in just the same way that the Quran relates. Research has unearthed traces of that people from beneath the desert sands. In the Quran, God reveals that the people of Ad turned away from the straight path out of arrogance. The peoples we have been examining all committed similar mistakes. They all rebelled against God. They adopted other gods than Him. They grew arrogant in the earth without any right and turned to sexual deviancy and perversion. And God destroyed them. A great many societies that have lived throughout the course of history have been destroyed for similar reasons, not just the few examples we have seen here. God tells us of this fact in the Quran and asks us to think hard about them. Our task is to learn from the destruction of these peoples and to take warning from them. One verse from the Quran says, Odd were arrogant in the land without any right, saying, Who has greater strength than us? Did they not see that God who created them had greater strength than them? But they renounced our signs. We must not forget that God can destroy an individual or a whole people whenever He wishes. He can also honor those whom He wishes and confer blessing upon them. All good and beautiful things are in the hands of God. Man's duty is to constantly thank God for all the blessings he has bestowed and to seek his good pleasure. God issues the following call to man in another verse of the Quran. Whole societies have passed away before your time. So travel about the earth and see the final fate of the deniers. This is a clear explanation for all mankind and guidance and admonition for those who do their duty.